Okay, so thank you, Sid. Uh, and we're, this is Kayla. Uh, I'm James Crump. I'm an attorney at Legal Aid of Western Missouri. I'm a program manager for our foreclosure prevention unit and also the program manager for the beneficiary deed project. Kayla Hogan is a paralegal on the beneficiary deed project, so um, she's more devoted to, I mean, that's the ceiling project she works on, and I split my time between a couple of different things. So um, she's going to hand out some stuff. We've got uh, also these green ones. Um, these are supposed to be a trifold thing, but they're not. So uh, the information is all the same. It just hasn't been folded. So uh, that's, and we'll talk about each of these as they go around. But what we're here today, the first thing to talk about is beneficiary deeds. A beneficiary deed is um, an estate planning device, but it's not a, a complete estate plan. Uh, basically, it's a transfer on death deed, but just for your house. Uh, it doesn't take care of your car or your personal uh, property or the things in the house. It doesn't take care of life insurance or uh, you know any investments you may have. But it does take care of your house. It will transfer title of your house immediately upon your passing to whoever you name. You can name one person or you can name many people. Um, it's best to kind of limit that and keep it in a small, you know, keep title among one or two people if you can, just for a lot of reasons that come up. But the beneficiary deed is a way to do that. We have special funding, and just like Mr. Bias was saying, if we don't use it, we're going to lose it. And so um, we've got a significant amount of funding from Hall Family Foundation, H&R Block Foundation, and the um, uh, William J. Brace Charitable Trust, which is a philanthropic trust administered by Bank of, uh, Bank of America. So we've got a, a good amount of funding for it. Um, we are trying to do as many of these deeds as possible. And it's a good, if you don't have a lot of items in your estate, this can be a great tool. And if you do have a lot of items in your estate, and it does seem that you would need a will, this can also be a great tool in conjunction with the will. Uh, for a couple of reasons. It can reduce the size of the probate estate, and so that you know, makes your probate administration cheaper. One of the great things about a beneficiary deed is it is a non-probate document. And so you sign it, it gets recorded with the, bene or with the recorder of deeds office. Um, we pay that recording cost. It gets recorded, and then it just kind of sits there until you pass away. And then the instant you pass away, your house transfers title to uh, whoever it is that was named as your beneficiary. Um, it's an immediate title transfer. They don't have to do anything. If you name your grandson and your grandson gets it, he doesn't have to do anything when you pass away. The title is automatically his. There's some things he can do in order to make sure that the tax name, you know, the name that the tax bill gets sent to gets pushed over to the <laughs> right person. But, um, you know, in terms of a title company looking at it later on, he doesn't have to do anything. <coughs> So it is a clean title transfer at that point. Um, and uh, let's see, what other? You can change it at any time. You name your grandson, and then you realize that you can't stand your grandson. You can change it and name your granddaughter instead. It's not a problem. Uh, you can name uh, a church or your neighborhood association or you know any charitable organization that you'd like or. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great way, and then the, you don't have to tell the beneficiaries. So if you got five kids and you name one of them, and you don't want to start a fight while you're alive, uh, you can not tell them, and they you know find out later. So some people kind of prefer it that way. And um, that was the last one. I guess that's it. Any questions? Is it filed once you complete the paperwork, or is it something you hold that is filed after the death? You record it um, right after you know right after you sign it and get it notarized. You file it. It just stays in the in the recorder's index, and uh, when you pass away, it's there. So it's something you do have to do before you pass away. We get it to where people have a, a house they've been living in that was a relative who's passed away, uh, and they ask about it. it, it the person who is the record owner, the record title owner, has to be the person to do the deed. So, um, and you can revoke it. So if you do one and you just decide that it's not the right tool for you later on, you just file a revocation with the recorder's office. It's a one-page thing, and it goes away. You don't do that too. Yep. <coughs>
can what you, other questions? Can you describe there? eligibility for how people can become eligible for your service? Yeah, this program is for seniors in Jackson County. So uh, age 60, a lot of people consider senior 65. For our purposes, it's age 60 or over in uh, Jackson County. That's where our grants are supposed to be specifically aimed at. So, um, yes, ma'am? Does this work with time sharing? Um, yeah, I never had that question. You don't have good, the title's not just yours on a timeshare. I think you own rights to a certain amount of time. No, and, it's, it's a, we oh, are really? Okay. Yeah, I suppose it would work then. Uh, I mean, as long as you're the title owner of the property, it, it, it'll work for it. So. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, beneficial D and a living trust, well, those are two different things, right? Yes, ma'am. The living so trust. I need both of the, that and. Well, that, I mean, a living trust, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. it can be a part of a trust. You can do a beneficiary deed in conjunction with a trust, and it will make sure that the property transfers. Um, it can transfer out of the trust if your trust is going to survive past the time that you're alive. Um, if you have a living will, that's an entirely different thing. That's a power of attorney, uh, which just grants people uh, the right to make health care and uh, financial decisions on your behalf if you become incapacitated. So to get one of uh, this, I would have to go and, and go to a lawyer and say, have drawn up for me? Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. So mm -hmm. um, we our numbers down here at the bottom, legal aid is entirely free. Uh, we've never charged a client a dollar for a single legal services uh, legal service we provided um, so you call this number you tell me you own a beneficiary deed we take intakes all the time we've never <coughs> closed intake for this project a number of other legal aid projects get closed uh, at times because they get overloaded but we can handle as many of these as you throw at us so if you've got your house and a couple other houses that you own as rental properties we can help you with all of them um, and we'll talk to you about your assets and your estate and make sure that a beneficiary deed seems right for you. Because if you, um, I don't do wills, but I can tell you if a will would be the better thing. So if you're just looking for a lawyer to talk to for free about it and make the decision as to what kind of tool would be best for you, we can do that as well. Just because you call doesn't mean you're locked into a beneficiary deed service in any way. Uh, we make house calls. If you have a neighbor who is in past, you know, they can't get out, we do house calls, we do them a lot. Um, we, we don't mind it at all because a lot of the people who can use this service the most are people who can't get out of the house. Um, Kayla's a notary, so when she meets with you to sign the deed, um, you know, we'll review it if you have any questions. We want to make sure the deed is exactly the deed that you want. Um, she'll review it with you if you have questions. Ask them then, we can change it. If not, we sign it. Uh, you sign it, she notarizes it. And then we pay for the recording costs with the recorder of deeds office. So uh, we give you back the original. They don't keep the originals anymore. They just scan them. So we can give you back the original. You've got it. You want copies, you can have them. If you want to give them to the people that you've named. Um, so it's, a, it's pretty easy. The whole process on your end would only take, uh, you know, we do the initial intake where we get some information. Uh, and then we set up a meeting time with you. So your total time commitment is about an hour. It's pretty quick. And that's something you can change later on. We do that frequently. Yeah? If they set up a meeting with you, what documents should they have available so that you can review them in order to determine title and everything? Driver's license. So I, if you give us your address, I can pull up all of your title documents online. Um, and we can talk about what you have out there. Uh, if, you do, if you have a mortgage, I'll, I'll know. I'll find out and um, have that. Track your assets, but it, they show up on the same reporter's index. So if you have questions about your mortgage, we can talk about them. Then this will not transfer the mortgage name. So if you if you have a mortgage on your house and you want your son to live in the house and you pass away and that mortgage is still there, it does not transfer the mortgage rights. So you need to have something worked out ahead of time. And there's things you can do about that. Um, but in the foreclosure unit that I work in, we see that frequently where somebody maybe did pick up title. Um, but they don't have the mortgage rights and they fall behind. And when they're trying to fix the mortgage problem, it becomes an issue because they're not the name on the mortgage. So you need to be planning for that ahead of time. And that's maybe a place where a will would be a better item or a better estate planning tool. Yes, ma'am? It has been a great tool for us at NHS with the minor home repair and the different grant programs because often 
they come in with two or three names on that. Right? Yeah. When you explain that, it's about each owner's income mm -hmm. and information, then that becomes a uh, real concern. Yeah. So I refer to many, many people. Great, yeah, we appreciate it. And, I mean, and that out. brings up the title consolidation issue. So if you do have four or five names on your title, um, we can help you try to figure out the best way to consolidate title. Because having title fractured amongst that many people makes things so hard when you're trying to figure out what you're going to do with the house. And um, that's another reason we encourage you, if you're going to get a beneficiary, you name one person. Because you might think your kids agree, but as soon as they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with that house, it, you know, somebody's got an idea of how much it's worth, and somebody, thinks, somebody else thinks something totally different. So it's important to uh, think about who the best person is to name, the person you trust the most to do with the house what you want, and to name that person as your beneficiary. So um, if you have questions about that, Call us anytime. We're available. Um, I'm there uh, all the time. Kayla's there almost all the time. And um, there's always going to be someone who will answer the phone or call you back. Uh, we try to be as flexible with you as we possibly can to accommodate. So um, don't feel bad about calling if you just have some questions. You don't have no obligations. Um, Next is the yellow one. That's the tax refund for, this is a program aimed at um, low income senior citizens or disabled individuals in Missouri. It's the uh, Missouri property tax credit. It's a great way to get some money back at the end of the year. Uh, it, if you are over 65 and you're on, and you have low income or, um, I think the top is 33,000, so, which is not, you know, that's a, quite a bit of money. but. Um, that would be the maximum, no, I'm sorry, 30000 not 33000 or 34000 if you're married. So, or if you're 100% disabled, or if you're at least 60 and you have surviving spouse benefits from a spouse who passed away, then you can be eligible for this program. So you file, um, it's a tax return document, it's about two pages, you provide proof of your income, and you provide a paid property tax receipt, and you can get back up to $1,100 in property taxes that you paid, just for your real property, so only for your real estate. You can claim for the past three years. So um, I had a guy who was only a few streets from here that was a client of mine. He had a foreclosure, and he was only about you know 3,500 bucks behind. So we were able to get $3,300 back in tax return, and then he paid the extra 200, and we were able to stop the foreclosure on his house. So that's a really great story about this program, but um, also if you just you know think that you're entitled to some money that you didn't get back and you want to have some uh, money to play around with, then this would be something that's definitely worth looking into. Um, the, uh, this pink one has information on how to file the property tax credit claim, but if you start doing it and you're having a real hard time or anything or you have questions, just give us a call and we're happy to talk to you about it. It does have limited eligibility, but um, we can work through that in just about four or five minutes we can figure out if you're eligible. So the last one, I'm sorry. Excuse me, this is the same one that you, like you apply uh, your taxes every year, you can use uh, uh, on your tax, you know, when you apply, uh, is this the same, the same thing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. A uh, good tax repair should be doing it for you. Okay. So, but there's plenty of bad tax repairs out there. Now, plenty of people who just don't file taxes because they don't have to. They're on Social Security and um, they don't they don't have enough income that they need to report it. And but they're still eligible for this program. You don't have to have any sort of wage income to be eligible for this. So, um, last one is this one. So if you hold it like this, that's kind of how it's supposed to go. Uh, the, it doesn't really matter. I'll just tell you everything that's on. This is tax sale season. We're approaching rapidly. Uh, the last week in August is when they're going to hold the Jackson County tax sales. What happens is, um, and unfortunately I see seniors being the uh, target, not the target, it's not scheme, but they're the people who seem to be in this situation most frequently because they've paid their house off and their mortgage is no longer paying their taxes and so they forget to keep paying them. Uh, it happens a lot, it's very sad, um, and there are some ways to get through it. And so if you miss your your property taxes on your house for three years in a row, they file a lawsuit. And after they file that lawsuit, you have one year to pay that tax, those taxes back at 18% interest. It's a lot. And so um, 
an interest is a cruise monthly. Every month you can look and see your account statement going up and up and up. So um, they get that judgment. If you don't pay the full amount that's due within that year, they will foreclose on your house the next August. And so it's basically four years from this tax payment to the house gone. Um, there are very limited opportunities to get your house back after it's been sold. And so um, dealing with this problem before it gets to the day before or the week before the tax sales is really important because it gets harder and harder the closer you get to the tax sale. There are a few options to stop a tax sale. It's, just, it's still a foreclosure, so the same sorts of things um, sometimes can work. One is a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. And the Chapter 13 bankruptcy, um, you can repay the amount that you're behind over a three or a five year period. And at the same time, you can get rid of a lot of unsecured debts that you have. So if you have a lot of credit card debts or medical debts, a Chapter 13 can be a really great tool for you. Um, that's one option. You know, there's obviously some downsides to bankruptcy. It's expensive. It's a court proceeding. It's um, very strict. The courts do not have a sense of humor if you miss a payment. So, um, you know, we have great judges here. We really do. We're very fortunate. Uh, the eastern side of the state does not have good bankruptcy judges. Uh, or they're okay, but they're a little more uh, strict than ours. Our judges are very good, very consumer friendly. But it's a hard system and it damages your credit uh, in a very real way. So, um, bankruptcy is nothing to be taken lightly. And if you can find another way to deal with this problem, then it's something that you should really look into. The other way that the state law has allowed for this problem to be dealt with, um, which seems to be the one that we use the most, is a redemption contract. So um, you're not redeeming the property from the sale because after it's sold, it's gone. But um, you can, anytime up to the date of the sale, you can get into up to a four-year contract to pay back the amount that you're behind. You have to make monthly payments on that. Again, it's an 18% interest rate, which is a higher interest rate than what the bankruptcy court charges. But, um, you know, it's a, certainly a way to deal with it. Um, that won't deal with any other debts. That's just a house thing. After the house is sold, it's really hard to get it back. This is a Class A county, and Class A counties um, in Missouri do not have a property redemption. So if you lose your house, it's gone. You can't, you know, in, in some other places or other parts of the country, if your house gets foreclosed, you can buy it back within a year after the sale date. This is not a place where that is possible. And so um, the only real way to overturn a sale on these is that if they buy the house for less than 10% of its value, you can go through a court proceeding and um, get that overturned. So we had a $98,000 house last year that we were working with the homeowners and they didn't have a mortgage. They had $98,000 in equity and they lost their house for $2,700. And so um, that was a big case. I mean, that was a big deal for us, a high priority one, because that was a lot of equity to lose. So um, that, uh, you know, it's important to deal with this. <coughs> this is the time, if you know, if you or someone you know is having this issue, have them call us right away, because it's better for us to get a jump start on it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not the most serious thing in the world, but it is something that you really need to deal with. So, any questions? We stick around.